Well, hello, our fellow friends, our fellow neighbors, and our fellow shining stars. Our next trolley <laughs> stop is here, and our next trolley stop is now. Welcome back to an all new episode of PR from the Hearts Children's Book Spotlight Series. To be precise, we have reached that beautiful, magical number of 200. That is the 200th trolley stop here at the Children's Book Spotlight Series he, here at PR from the Heart. My name is John Massalonis, the manager of PR from the Heart, the host of the Children's Book Spotlight Series, along with my faithful furry friend, companion, and co-host, Little Forest. This is going to be a very big celebration today. So we encourage all of you, wherever you are, wherever you may be, to enjoy this very special trolley stop because we've come so far over the course of these past five plus years. And it's very interesting because when we take the time to celebrate, it's important that we celebrate with song and with food. But before we mention that, for those who are new to our neighborhood, who are near and dear to our hearts, who have been with us since day one, if you haven't had the opportunities to do so, one of the many ways you can pledge your support for us here at the Children's Book Spotlight Series is to subscribe to PR from the Hearts official YouTube channel, to like this episode of the program, to share this very special trolley stop that you are about to enjoy. That is episode number 200 of the Children's Book Spotlight Series, to share this on your, on your social media platforms of your choosing. Growing up in Buffalo, it's interesting. I was very blessed and very fortunate, maybe even more than I realize. And I know that over the years, many people were saying, John, what is there to do in Buffalo? <laughs> well, when you're a child of the 80s or the 70s, but especially the 80s, which was an awesome decade, and you live in Buffalo, you were on that sweet spot because you could get the American television stations, and then you could also get two big television stations in Canada based in Toronto. One was CFTO and one was CBC. And of course, if you are near and dear to the program, you've supported it since day one, or if you are a newer listener, viewer, friend, fellow neighbor, fellow shining star, you know our affinity for the late Fred Rogers. But when you took the time to be able to watch CBC, we were able to get Mr. Dress Up. We were able to get Fred Penner's place. And yes, we were able to get the Sharon, Lowen, Lois, and Bram elephant show. So many fond memories growing up, and I'm sure that there are millions of children that had that sweet spot that lived right in that Buffalo, Toronto, Detroit, that sort of synergetic area. And again, as I mentioned beforehand, we're going to be taking the time to celebrate because this is the 200th episode of the Children's Book Spotlight series. And we're going to celebrate with song and we're going to celebrate with food and maybe not just any kind of food, but it really is a magical food. We're, of course, talking about peanut butter and jelly. So if you're wondering how all of this meshes together, you see and you feel what it is that you now see on screen. And so we're about to begin officially with our 200th episode celebration here at the Children's Book Spotlight Series. We encourage all of you, our listeners and viewers, our fellow friends, our fellow neighbors, and our fellow shining stars to head on over to Amazon.ca and purchase your copy of Sharon Lois and Bram's Peanut Butter and Jelly. It is now available. One of the many ways that you can pledge your support for Sharon, for Lois, for Bram, and for Randy is to leave a five-star review because that just lets them know that they're doing wonderful and much-needed work for children, parents, families, educators, and those who love great children's books. And it's interesting, over the years when we have certain trolley stops, it takes a very special episode to have two guests join us and not just one. So the trolley heads out from San Diego all the way across the country and north of the border to our friends and neighbors in Toronto, one of the most beautiful cities in the entire world. If people have always asked me over the years, what is the most beautiful city outside of San Diego that you have ever been to? <laughs> my answer, my response has always been Toronto. Joining us as our feature guests here for the Children's Book Spotlight Series 200th episode celebration. Of course, you remember her, you love her from her time on the show in the Sharon Lewis and Bram Elephant Show, Sharon Hampson and her daughter, Randy. They are the co-creators of the award-winning, best-selling Sharon Lewis and Bram's Peanut Butter and Jelly. And of course, we also have our copy of 
Skinnamarink as well, too. I know Little Forest absolutely has been jamming out to Skinnamarink over the course of these past several weeks since he knew the both of you were going to be on the program. Such a pleasure, such an honor to have the both of you on board with us here to celebrate our 200th episode celebration. Thank you for spending some time with us here in our neighborhood. Thank you, John. What a treat. And John, you say Toronto just like a Torontonian. <laughs> Did he, I didn't notice he says Toronto. He says Toronto. <laughs> it's, it does. I mean, whether it be uh, Blue Jays games, whether it be theater performances, whether it be wrestling events, one of my fondest memories I'll just briefly mention of Toronto may have been my last Toronto trip. I remember seeing the world premiere of the Tom Hanks, Mr. Rogers film, A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood. Beautiful, the, beautiful. At, at the Roy Thompson Hall, and you had thousands uh, of neighbors singing the neighborhood theme song together, and it was just this amazing experience. So I do light up like a kid on Christmas whenever anyone mentions Toronto. I am old enough and young enough to remember Sam the Record Man, because I did have one stop at, at Sam the Record Man. I think it was the uh, Brian Adams cassette single, Thought I Hide and Gone to Heaven. So yeah, I've got plenty of Toronto memories, but we're here to talk about our memories of Sharon Lewis and Brand, and of course, how things are coming full circle. Um, we're always big on origin stories here at the Children's Book Spotlight Series since day one of the program to where we are right now. And there's obviously people that the both of you connect with every day that have heard of Sharon Lois and Bram. And then there's people that come to you and say, it, it, it sounds great. Can you tell me more about it? I've never heard you. I've never watched you. Um, Sharon, starting things off, could you share with us really where... And there's technically two origin stories. There's the origin stories of your books. And then there's the origin story of how you and Lois and Bram came together. Because that really is the ultimate origin story. Could you share with us, we go back in Doc Emmett L. Brown's time machine. Could you take us <laughs> back to that time where you first met and really when you knew that this was truly something special that would really last a long time? Well, sure. I'll give you the... Cole's Notes, or Reader's Digest version. Um, we Each of the three of us was working with children and music in different ways. Uh, Lois and I were introduced by a, a mutual friend who said, you're both working with children's music, you should know each other. Bram and I were had been involved in the kind of coffee house community in the early um, 60s, I would say, late, early 60s. And is that right, 4353? 50, yes. 60. Yeah, yeah. Early sixties. I'm doing my math. Um, so we were, we were, we kind of knew each other, and we became colleagues because we worked through a program that was spawned by the Mariposa Folk Festival, which was one of the first and very successful folk music festivals. A program called Mariposa in the schools. We went into schools and we sang with children and with classrooms. We went on a freelance basis, and we became friends and colleagues. And with another friend, Bill Usher, we decided to make a record together. We did not decide to start a career together. It was not a master plan. It was just, let's make this really good record. We shared values about what children deserve, the best of best of, of the world, good quality, you know, not, not a discount record, but something that involved quality. And so we, we decided to make a record together and we did not understand that we were starting a career together. But really and truly, it was the response to the record of, of, of the audience. They, you know, they loved the record. They bought it. They, they said, make more, do more, come perform for us. And that's really, we each, the fact is that we each continued our individual careers for a little while after the record came out because we didn't know that, we, that it was going to explode the way it did. But lucky for us, people liked what we were doing and wanted more and more of it. And that's how it began. When you when you take us to the time frame around the mid '80s, and of course that was the creation of the Sharon Lois and Bram Elephant Show, television programs they can be successful, they can have pilot episodes, and they never see the light of day. Right. Was there a specific moment that you knew that this was something really magical in many respects? Did you know very early on? Was it maybe something that took a little bit of a length of a longer period of time in the process? You know, I think we were innocent. We, we, we had 
the two guys who came to us, many people came to us and said, let's, do you want to do television? Do you have money? And we said, no. And the two guys who ultimately were the producers came to us. They didn't have children, but they were uncles. They had nieces and nephews and, and they understood that there was something special with our music. And, and they, along with us, made the show happen. But you know, we were having so much fun doing it. We we hung on to the same values that we applied to our recordings. You know, good quality music, use good musicians, use good writers and children and treat children the way we always treated children. Like they're substantial, you know, they're friends. They're, they're not beneath us. There are, so it, there was a kind of, people watched the show we, and told us many years later, a lot of people have written and said, we learned about parenting from you. Now, we didn't set out to do anything like that. We just simply treated children the way they should be treated. So we did not have a, this feeling like, oh, this is really going to take off. Each year, you know, we'd finish our, our, I think we did 13 episodes during the summer. And then we'd wait to find out if it was going to be renewed. And it was exciting every time it, it got renewed. So... You know, after a while, we we came to realize that the show was a success and people really loved it. And we were proud. I think that when Nickelodeon picked it up, that's when you really realized right. the massive um, influence. influence of the show. Yeah. yeah. Yes. As a matter of fact, I, I do. Re I forgot about that. And you're absolutely right, Randy. You know, we were we would make occasional forays into the United States to do a little concert here and a little concert there. And then Nickelodeon picked up the show and bingo, we were playing at, you know, outdoor venues of thousands of people, you know, state fairs. I mean, it was astounding response. An American audience was very loving. It went from Detroit and Buffalo to cross country U.S. tours with two tour buses, Hawaii, Alaska, you know, Regis and, and Kathy Lee in Florida, Disney World, uh, you know, just completely exploded. I can only imagine, Randy, growing up and seeing your mom putting, and I know this can sound cliche, but putting smiles on the faces and the hearts of children, what was the experience like for you? Because there, there's, there's times when, when children grow up as the child of a celebrity, it can be a blessing, or it can be the exact opposite of that. And it, it feels like it sounds like just from the bond that you two share. Thankfully, it was more of the blessing than the, than the curse, so to speak. It was a hundred percent a blessing, and. You know, in addition to the vicarious pleasure that I got watching my mother's success, I, you know, I sold merch and I would meet them on the road sometimes when they were going somewhere fun like New York or Hawaii or, you know, I would just, I join them on a tour. I answered fan mail. I helped them curate songs. I did just got to be part of all of that. And most people in their jobs, first of all, they don't, they don't love what they do. And I, got, I had two parents who loved what they did and got immense pleasure and pride in doing it. And at, you know, 45 years later, um, I still hear, I mean, people thank me for sharing my mother with them. Mm -hmm. they, they talk about the values that Cheryl Mollis and Bram helped instill in them they talk about how they had bad home lives and they wish Sharon Lois and Bram were their parents or they learned how to be kind in spite of trauma that Sharon Lois and Bram was a safe space so how lucky am I that I benefited from growing up in that environment I mean one of the things that I think made them so successful is that the human beings that they were on television are the same people that they are in real life. I'm really glad that you mentioned that thread because I remember watching the Mr. Rogers documentary, Won't You Be My Neighbor, that came out six, seven years ago. And, you know, there were these uh, funny urban legends about Mr. Rogers, how he was, uh, how he had tattoos and how, you know, he was, uh, he was, you know, like a biker or, or things along the lines of that. And it's, uh, 
there, there's an expression and I'll try to paraphrase it, you know, sometimes we can be afraid to meet our heroes because maybe they're the exact opposite of, of who they are. Uh, being a fan of the Sharon Lowe's and Bram Elephant show growing up as a child, one of the things that I could connect with was your sincerity and your authenticity and that you had genuineness that you really wanted to nurture the minds and hearts of children and make the world a better place. Sharon, the world is a completely different place now than what it was during the 80s. Um, you know, even when Mr. Rogers, he was asked to come back and do some PSAs after 9-11. And he asked himself, he had this, you know, it was talked about in the documentary, like, what is it that I can do? Here's this horrific event. What is it that I can do? Um what do you feel is it because there's there's something about that time where people still connect with it's not even necessarily nostalgia so to speak but as you mentioned the safe space where it's a matter of like i will still find myself watching episodes of the sharon lois and bram elephant show on your youtube channel or watching episodes of mr rogers neighborhood why do you feel that there's something what is it about that 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 time the 80s, especially in comparison to now, why people can still just go back to that and just feel like everything is going to be okay in a world where sometimes we don't know whether or not everything is going to be okay. Wow, that's a tough one. Um, children, I, I don't know exactly the answer to that, but I do believe that children, like when we perform, people say, you know, kids have so much technology that they're exposed to now. You know, what are they like when when you do a show? And when we do a show, we have this, basically the same kids that we had 20, 30 years ago. Give them a chance, invite them in, encourage them to join you and to sing and play and have fun. That there's that's only good, and they and they they eagerly come to that. And in terms of parents who go back to those times. I think what they're doing is reflecting on happiness in their childhood. You know, mm. I meet people who are tearful when they meet me. And I say, don't be embarrassed about crying. You're remembering happy childhood times. And that's a good thing. Now, now, now as Randy mentioned, not every young person remembers happy childhood time, but they do remember that, that with us, they were safe. Mm. I'm, I get that on our social media feedback too. I, you know, people saying, why am I crying? Or I needed this today. You know, just these are, these are grownups and, and to be taken back to their child spirit and to a space where they felt com comfort and safety is in, in the world that we live in today, having parents seeking that is understandable. Having grown up seeking that is understandable. So I love hearing that you still go back to that place because what can be wrong with singing together, making music, having fun, being silly, all of those wonderful qualities. Right. Whenever, um, going back to grammar school for myself, whenever I would get my report cards, on the report card, they would have the little, what I would call like the glamour shot that was taken at the very beginning of the year. And I still actually had that. Let me introduce you to my inner child right here. Oh, there you are. Flip on, tie, line. flip on tie, whole mop of hair, so to speak. Wow. The reason why I keep that is because we all still have the inner child within us. And we'll, we'll put, we'll put a pin in that thread and circle back. One of the other things that I wanted to, to discuss is, is that it's very easy when you see someone who is a celebrity, you can have this belief that they are invincible, that they're like silver Buddhas walking on golden clouds, that they have no problems, that everything is all Kumbaya and Shangri-La, so to speak. Um, specifically, along your path, Sharon, were there any challenges, difficulties, obstacles, problems that you experience? You know, here you are having this great success. Um, we always like to be able to, to share this thread specifically because, you know, if someone is, let's say, starting a business for the first time or writing their first children's book or doing anything or even stepping more into their life's purpose, their mission, their dharma, 
you know, we have those human elements. We can have the challenges, difficulties. We can feel insecure about ourselves. So what were some of the specific challenges and difficulties that you experienced along the way? And what were some of the things that helped you to get through to the other side of those challenges and difficulties? Well, I have a big one. I've had breast cancer three times and I had it publicly. Now, I didn't choose initially to have it publicly, but it became clear I had it three times, so it became clear pretty early on that there was something good that I could use, that I could do using my personal experience. And so I, I really spoke out about breast cancer, about how it feels to have breast, breast cancer, about the impact on family and friends. And, and so I got a benefit. I mean, I gave, I think I gave something that was a benefit, but I also received something that was a benefit because knowing that something that's hard for you is, has the potential to be helpful to other people is, is pretty significant. I remember a little, a little girl at a, at a signing that we were doing approached me and said, you know, thank you for talking about breast cancer. My mother has breast cancer and, and you really helped me. So mm -hmm. I feel I feel great positive response to that, to my that experience. And of course, I had a lot of support from my family, from from Lois and Bram, from people around me. I could not have weathered the storm. And in fact, the second my second time, um, it happened right before we were due to shoot the second year of was no, the last year, the fifth year of the elephant show. And we had to take a break so that I could have some treatment. And then I went back and, you know, I mean, people took care of me. I had a lot of love and support and kindness around me. And um, so that was a challenge, but we all faced the challenge. I remember having to tell Randy and, my, and her brother, my son, that was, that was, you know, you don't want to lay a heavy one on your kids, but you have to trust that they're able to deal with what comes their way and that that they'll help you and they did right randy i well i think that you just handled it all like a trooper i mean you kept working you didn't really ever take any time off i have a memory of you practicing songs when you were getting getting your radiation done i remember you going there's a funny story about you going to a doctor's appointment might maybe tell john that story and i don't know remember which one you mean you didn't have a lot of time. You were filming Skin and Rate TV. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that was not during breast cancer, but that was that was during the shooting of um, we were filming um, <laughs> we were filming uh, Skin and Rate TV, the the series that came along later. And one of the specialists that I was going to, I had an appointment with her, but we were in the middle of doing television stuff, and they switched around the schedule so that I was dressed in with a wig and a hot pink suit and mesh stockings and, and, and the big black glasses. I was Leanna Brianna Smith. I looked like a different person. And they said, you know, if you go right now to make your appointment, then, you know, you'll be back on time to shoot this segment. So I went dressed like that. And I went to the hospital, walked through the whole hospital, went to the doctor. She said, nothing nothing she conducted the you know the interview the examination of, like nothing different was happening it was very weird anyway it was uh, it was uh, it was pretty funny stuff but i i made my way through um and i did i was a spokesperson in the breast cancer community and i remember i was invited to speak um at a an event a canadian event with I, what, what did they call it? Do you remember, Randy? I can't remember what they called it, but it was an event with doctors and, and women who had had breast cancer and scientists. It was a, a national event. And Canadian I was invited, Breast Cancer Forum. The Canadian Breast Cancer Forum. Good for you, Randy. So I was asked to speak at that. And um, we were performing. We we had a tour set up in California, and they I think they canceled one date and flew me home on a red eye flight overnight so that I could get to, it was in Montreal and so that I could get there on time. And I spoke there and they used a clip from our Christmas, our holiday special, Sharon Lois and Bram's Candle Snow and Mistletoe, where we sang, um, what's the name of the song, Randy? I one don't know what this station. One tiny spark and a candle is. Oh yeah, candles long ago. What, 
Candles Long Ago. Beautiful, yeah. beautiful song. It was written for us by the producers of the show. And when they said they wanted to write a Hanukkah song, we said, no, you can't do it. And they said, well, let us try. <laughs> anyway, they, they wrote it. And, and our manager's wife said, that song isn't a Hanukkah song. It's for anyone who, who understands, the, you know, who thinks about family and special events and special occasions. So they took a clip from that song of me singing it, which they mm -hmm. showed on national TV. And so my speaking out about breast cancer, really, it spread. It reached a very large audience. And I, and I was, I was, I, I benefited immensely from, from that situation. So something that comes your way that's a hardship can also be a huge benefit. And Lois and Bram fully, you know, you to talk to them because it was going to impact them too. And they fully supported your decision to be public about it at a time when Canadian celebrities was, were not talking about it. It's a commonplace thing now, but cancer was a dirty word at that time. People did not right. say it. And, and if you talked about cancer, you assumed that the person was going to die from it. So you I know, was actually, the, I'm sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say that. I use my mother as a happy ending story, a reminder to people that cancer is not a death sentence, that, that it, 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 it can be treated and, um, you know, that she is a reminder of the success of it. Mm -hmm. I'm one of the happy ending stories for sure. But before I had agreed to become a spokesperson, I, I said I have, to, I have to check with my family and I have to check with Lois and Bram because they all have to be on board. And uh, uh, Lois gave me a suggestion that I used in my talk. And Graham also gave me, he gave me a, a song, a clip it for a song. He said, remember B Bob Hope used to sing, thanks for the memories. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. He said, well, how about you start your, your talk with thanks for the memories. <laughs> I think so it was angst 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 for the you're memories. right Randy angst for the memories yeah you're <laughs> right no thanks angst exactly oh boy takes two of us to remember what the things that I don't remember <laughs> well it definitely sounds like and it feel it feels like that you were surrounded with love absolutely and, and, and there's something about Canada and this is another question that I wanted to mention because Every like all my experiences with Canada, and you probably get this. I even remember with the um, South Park movie that came out 25 years ago, <laughs> bigger, longer, and uncut. And yeah. whenever uh, the the, the, the co-creators of the series, even though they kind of riffed on Canada, they they had mentioned and if, and many pe Canadians are so polite. There's something oh, about I when you go to Canada, it's different. If you could really put a word or a phrase like, what is it you are, in many respects, Canadian ambassadors and Canada has just given you this big, warm hug for decades. I wonder if it has anything to do with the fact that, I, I mean, I've never thought about this in this in this way, but I wonder if it's partly because in many ways we're taken care of, mm -hmm. you know, some uh, Amer an American man who used to call me and a very much older than me man used to call occasionally from the States and he wanted to know he said you know I heard that when you're 70 you can't get any hospital care anymore I said well someone is feeding you a line because of course that's not true and every I've had breast cancer three times I've had all kinds of stuff and it's all taken care of so I wonder if the fact that we have a lot of social services that look after us, you know, when you're sick, you get cared for. Maybe that's what makes us calmer. I don't, I don't know the real answer. I know sometimes when someone bumps into me, I say, sorry, <laughs> why? <laughs> we are polite. It's, it, it's something that, uh, again, you know, being out here in San Diego the past couple of years, I, I've envisioned at some point making a return trip back to Toronto. But again, there's there's the fond memories of childhood growing up. And of course, now there is a new generation of Sharon, Lois, and Bram fans through the release of your brand new children's books, which we're going to be diving into momentarily. We appreciate all of you, our listeners and viewers, our friends and neighbors, and of course, our fellow shining stars for spending some time with us here in our neighborhood for our 200th episode celebration of the children's book spotlight series. Joining us on the program is our feature guests, 
Sharon and Randy Hampson. We encourage all of you to be able to head on over to Amazon.ca and to purchase your copies of Skinamarink and Peanut Butter and Jelly. They are now available courtesy of our friends and neighbors at Tundra Penguin Random House Canada. One of the many ways that you can pledge your support for Sharon, for Lois, for Bram and for Randy is to leave your five-star review to let them know that they're doing wonderful and much-needed work for children, parents, families, educators, and those who love great children's books. We've also done our part to provide the Sharon, Lois, and Bram official website and social media platform so you can stay connected, jam along during the Children's Book Spotlight series, post-Children's Book Spotlight series. Um, with your Skin and Marine children's book, you know, talking about that song, if, if there, if maybe you, you go to anyone, whether it be they spend some time in Canada or even here in the United States, that's high up on many people's lists of like iconic childhood songs. And I'm, and I'm curious to the origins, I, I guess that there's, that there's a third origin story mentioned, your origin story of Sharon Lewis and Bram, and then we'll talk about the origin stories of, of the books, but specifically the song and the way it, it it was and is very interactive and it was again your way of telling children we love you and that you are loved could you share with us specific yes. maybe any yes. moments along the way of creating that song it, did you know it would be a, a hit very early on or was it the exact no, opposite that that song is a gift as far as i'm concerned and the way it came to us is, is a charming story. When, when we were making our first record, we needed to raise money to make it. We were trying to raise $20,000 and we went to family and friends and asked them if they would loan us the money. And Lois went to her family, Lois was from Chicago and she went to her family in Chicago. And while she was there, she, her, her young cousin, Lisa, they spent time together and she said, do you know any good songs? And Lisa sang Skinnerman, the original Skinnerman to her, I love you. And she came back to Toronto and we were making the record. She said, how about this song? And we said, oh, that's a great song. Let's, let's record it. So we recorded it. Bram only played guitar on it and, and Lois and I sang it. I sang, a, you know, a harmony to it. And it was such a charming song. We liked it so much that we, the first time we ever did a concert, we said, wouldn't that be a great song to end the show with? It's such a lovely message. I love you. We're singing to them. I love you. They're singing to, to us. I love you. It has these adorable actions. I love you. So we used it to close that concert. And it became obvious to us right away that that was a song to close everything that we ever did. Every concert, every talk, every TV show, everything it's a beautiful message and people took to it instantly and they started singing it children to their parents or their grandparents or parents to each you know it just weddings they sang it at weddings it just became and had a, an immense popularity which we never anticipated and then we were approached about the book and randy should tell that story because left to Bram and me, we say it probably wouldn't have been a book. It would have been a pamphlet because it's too short to be a real book. And Randy is the one who turned it into a book. So Randy, you go with that. Well, I just, when I heard that they were going to turn it into a book, I said, it's not going to be long enough. Would you mind if I had a go at some verses? And um, I wrote a bunch of verses and we picked the ones that we thought would lend themselves to fun uh, illustrations. We didn't know at that time that Chin Ling was going to illustrate the books. And, um, but it was really, it, it, one of the activities that we do with the book now is that we encourage teachers to have children write their own verses that they can come up with because it's, I love you. You know, the idea for me was, like one of the verses is I love you when you're happy and when you're feeling blue and when you're feeling grumpy, I'll give a hug to you. So even when, you know, even when you're mad, I still love you. Like just this notion of I love you unconditionally. So I bet kids have their own, you know, I love you in the park. I love you on a picnic. I just, what, whatever they feel like, um, it's a chance for them to think about that in an unconditional way. And Bram and I were thrilled to have Randy create those verses. I mean, we all 
vetted them and had, you know, basically she wrote it. She wrote, and and Bram and I are at the stage in our lives where probably with limited energy, we would not have embarked on this on this effort. And and that one book has led to three books and, and hopefully more to come. So for that, we're indebted to Randy. That's the mother talking. The other the thing that... Thing that was a powerful and surprising experience for me. Uh, I went with Sharon and Bram on their 40th anniversary tour, and they sang the new version of the song on that tour. And the audience instantly accepted the new verses and sang in between them. And now when Sharon and I do concerts together, they know the new verses they are singing them along with us mm -hmm. so the that has been a massively rewarding experience and and john can i just mention to you you're talking about amazon reviews so one of the things that was very important to us was to reflect in the books the same feelings and sentiments that sharon lois and bram and sharon and bram have been um espousing for 45 years so i wanted the illustrations to be inclusive so we wanted her to have a diverse cast of characters on the pages we wanted it to be friendly to the gay lesbian and queer community so in one drawing there are two dads making pancakes together uh we had a rainbow flag in there and one of the reviews was um a two-star review which said, be careful, they've surreptitiously snuck a rainbow into the illustrations, you know, um, warning. And I was like, okay, well, we're doing something right if someone's complaining <laughs> about that. Isn't that a pity? Wow, I didn't know that. Yeah. Randy doesn't tell me everything, which is a, a huge benefit. But I mean, what a limited person, isn't that something? Well, this it's it, it it's unfortunate that that was the case. It's um, you have and continue to accept everyone for who they are, and that's one of the things that I love about all of your children's books is the fact that kids need to hear that reinforcement. Mm -hmm. and that's something that you're and there and to be able to create different ways to bond with your children to bond over food to bond yeah. over music so the fact that randy you're right you've been able to expand these songs to something even more than that because one of the beautiful things about illustrations especially chin's illustrations is the fact that literally the songs come to life. You see the illustrations, you see, you know, when everyone's making the peanut butter and jelly and you see the different ways in which, um, you know, the, one of my favorite illustration spreads in Skin and Marink is when the, the family is camping out at night and there's the underneath the moon and they're looking at the moon and it's just this, there's something about that. And that's how illustrations really, I mean, without illustrations, it would just be, a pamphlet it wouldn't be you know <laughs> it, it, it wouldn't be a, a a vibrant book it would just be words on a page so to speak so now that you've seen all of your books and getting the response that they have knowing the fact that you're able to reach new people new and not even just reach new people new audiences but this is literally a new generation that were not even around in the 80s what absolutely does that, what, what does that mean to the both of you well for me you know if i credit randy with this she i think you should say what you believe about longevity randy because i hadn't really thought about about our music living on and on and on and and music in the books you, you go for it randy because my you're the one my, my belief is it's 45 years. Bram would say we're on the fifth generation of, of audience now. Um, it, it's evergreen music. I mean, Bram always says that coming around the mountain is, is a new hit to whoever's listening to it for the first time. Uh, I don't, I want, you know, Lois has died. Bram is retired. My mom, thankfully, is game to pass on the love of Sharon Lewis and Bram music to another generation of people. But 
I think it's evergreen. I want this music to continue to live on. I'm thrilled that it's in the books. My my fantasy is that Sharon Lewis and Bram Skinnamarink and One Elephant Went Out to Play and Peanut Butter and Jelly become the Robert Munch books of children's music. I want families to keep buying them as baby presents. I want them to to look at the illustrations when they're too young to understand them and then be reading them to their younger baby siblings and passing them on. I I feel like this is a forever legacy. I mean, they took people listen to Beethoven's music still. I want Sharon Lewis and Bram's music to be in that category. And I feel that through these books that the the legacy is obviously continuing. I mean, I, I'm old school. I actually have a record player still. Well, it's actually a combination of a record player, radio, cassette player. I think I got it at Kohl's, but it's this magical device where it's like, <laughs> wow, I can listen to vinyls, but even vinyls have made a comeback. Children's books are timeless. And this is why when I, when I noticed the fact, I'm like, wow, Sharon Lois and Bram, they've got children's books. I need to read these. I need to see these. And again, just over the years, We've had some of the top award-winning and best-selling children's authors on the program. And this is why I'm like, who do I get on the show for the 200th episode? It has to just stick out like a like a like a, a, a giant bold Christmas light, the most beautiful Christmas light possible. And I'm like, of course, then it circles back to, you know, the childhood memories and growing up in Buffalo and you know, watching CBC. Of course, Aww. we are beginning to wind down our time with our featured guests here on our 200th episode celebration of the children's book spotlight series, Sharon and Randy Hampton. Of course, we are fully enjoying all of their brand new children's books, including Skinnamarink and Peanut Butter and Jelly. They are now available courtesy of our friends and neighbors at Tundra Penguin Random House Canada. We encourage all of you, our listeners and viewers, our friends and neighbors, and of course our fellow Shining Stars to purchase and enjoy your copies of all of their books and leave five-star reviews. Of course, one of the many ways you can pledge your support for Sharon Lewis and Bram is by leaving a five-star review on Amazon and continuing to support their music. Again, we've done our part to be able to provide their official website, social media platforms in the description below. If you're having a bad day, if you're having a bad week, maybe if you're moving through that proverbial divine storm, there's something about their music that will lift your spirits and that will just uh -huh. change the trajectory of your day. And, um, I, I also wanted to mention as well too, because, you know, you could have chosen a, a zebra, a giraffe, a puppy. <laughs> you could have had Little Forest. It could have been, you know, the Sharon Lewis and Bram, you know, Little Forest puppy show. What? <laughs> Why the elephant? I'm just kind of curious about that as well, too. I think we, we love the elephant Im image because elephants are strong. They're very family oriented. Women are a strong elephant. They, they look after the family for a long time before they send the sons off to be independent. And Bram and I had both traveled in Africa and were very uh, into the animals and into that, that kind of experience. So it just seemed like, I, it's, was, how perfect was that? Who, who knew? <laughs> you know, so many things that we did came to us without, it wasn't a marketing ploy or anything like that. So I, I think it has worked out very well for us. We love the elephant. I agree. Um... This is the bond that you and Lois, and obviously Lois is is no longer with us in the in the physical realm, but her spirit is very much with us. And I get I get emotional even even talking about this because um, there's times when you are a part of a group or you're part of a team of some sorts, and you know you can just just do it for the camera and just you know put on the smiles and get along well. Um, what is it about Lois and what is it about Bram? Maybe if it's quirks, characteristics, things you enjoy. Why why has this been such so deep and so meaningful to you? What is it about them? I mean, not even just them as people, but them as hearts and souls. What are some of the things that you want people to know about Lois and Bram specifically that maybe they they don't know, that they don't see on the camera that really will help them connect to Lois and Bram is why they're, why they're their own shining stars. You know, I, th I think 
the interesting thing is that what they saw through the camera was a pretty accurate representation of the relationship. We were in each other's lives for all of these years. We shared important events. We shared tragic events. We, you know, we were one or the other of us would be the first call if there was something that happened that was that was important. Uh, and Lois is is long gone, but her son David, he and Randy went to nursery school together before Lois and I ever knew each other. But they are in each other's. He is in our life. You know, he we are still strongly connected. And, you know, just before we got on this call, I had a message from Bram. So we are, you know, we were friends. We were like, we were family to each other throughout. We shared fundamental values. You know, the things that are important to you in your life, the things that matter. You know, in our work, it was how you treat each other and how you treat children. That's pretty basic. It seems pretty basic. Um, it was basic for us. We shared that. We shared human rights issues i mean we we shared values anything else John, Ryan? yeah i was gonna say uh lois would have loved to meet little forest and see little forest bow tie lois had a dandy dinmount terrier named rosie who was her best friend and constant companion she was an absolute dog lover she um was before she was a grandmother she was Auntie Lois to my son, Ethan, and when I went back to work, she would help take care of him. She had him, you know, one day a week, and she would bring him into the house and basically shove me out the door, and they would have a nap together, and they would have lunch together, and when she had her 70th birthday, the only guest she wanted at that, besides my mom and dad and Bram, were, was Ethan, my son. Uh, and the other thing that I would say about about both of them and my mother is all three had lifelong marriages. They had strong, solid marriages. And now Bram and my mother have been partners longer than either of them was with their spouse. Mm -hmm. So they know how to work through challenges and how to compromise and how to respect each other. So they're really that when you talk about the fundamental values there they are you know we have our we have our biological families and we have our chosen families and how lucky were we that that our chosen family were people that we really you know not just had to spend time with but got to spend time with you know Lois and Bram really were those people for us as were their spouses mm. And I'm just, I'm just so glad that that bond has lasted time because, you know, you can, you can blink the eyes and, you know, we go back to the Sharon Lewis and Bram Elephant and then we blink our eyes again. And here we are in the, in this moment. Um, and we'll, we'll put a pin in that briefly, but I, I also wanted to mention as we're, we're beginning to wind down our time is, is that by far this, this, this train is continuing and it's going to be continuing oh. through a documentary and there's something about documentaries i i always quote and mentions you can tell the mr rogers neighborhood documentary won't you be my neighbor because it really encapsulates uh you know a, a certain amount of years worth of work in this particular instance decades worth of work within a certain specific amount of time 90 minutes two hours that kind of thing um can you give us a little bit of a sneak peek as to because i'm not sure how far along the the the, sure. the process has been ongoing can you let us know what we can expect when that document for sure so we did we did a uh we filmed a 45th anniversary concert with special guests um bram Elephant came back for this concert. Um, fan friends performed. We had, I don't know if you know who Colin Mockery is, from Whose Line Is It Anyway? He and his wife, Deb McGrath, were, made, you know, hosted the show with Patrick McKenna. Um, P.K. Subban, the famous NHL hockey player, was a special guest. So we filmed that concert. We have been interviewing fans and friends of Sharon Lois and Bram. And we are just about to do our final interviews on the documentary starting in February. 
Um, and really, it's about the magic of Sharon, Lois, and Bram. What is it about that that has connected people for all of these years? And the impact that their music have had on celebrities and regular people and people with disabilities and special needs and challenges and the queer community, all, you know, all of these areas that they that they seem to have had an impact so um we yeah so i i can't tell you when it's going to be released but i can tell you we are working diligently on it we are also going to be releasing a, a new vinyl this year so um you'll have to keep an eye out for that i'm really um, looking at my record player right over there <laughs> <laughs> Um, we are working on a couple of new book ideas. Uh, we are working on um, trying to get the Elephant Show back up on either a streaming platform or on YouTube. Uh, there's a there is an appetite for that, and we are constantly putting new um, new social media fun things together for people on TikTok and Instagram and YouTube and Facebook. So. We just want to we just want to keep engaging with their with their fans and trying to keep the music going. And the music will continue. And well, I'm just really so blessed to be able to do my part because it's it, it, it's so fascinating is, is that with the connection that I have with with Mr. Rogers neighborhood and having my dear friend and fellow neighbor, David Newell, we co-host, as I mentioned, the, the other popular program that we do, the Neighborly Reviews Bookcast. Um, in some way, I feel like I've been given a job of being a custodian of helping these timeless messages to continue. Um, and it's interesting because there are two ways that we always close out of our uh, close out our programs here at the Children's Book Spotlight series. Of course, we've mentioned Mr. Rogers' name more than a handful of times, I'm sure. Um, he did this in many respects on the neighborhood. When he got out into the community, he spoke, whether it be at uh, college or university talks, um, different different chats amongst the community and even more so notably when he received his lifetime achievement award at the daytime emmys shortly before he passed from stomach cancer and he always kept the time whether it be 15 seconds 30 seconds or a full minute he encouraged us to remember those who helped love us into being and that was his way of saying remember those angels that came across our path that helped to lift us up when we were down who reminded us to enjoy a good peanut butter and jelly sandwich and to not go hungry who reminded us that we are loved just as we are who are some of the people that the both of you would like to publicly recognize that helped love the both of you into being and that helped love sharon lois and bram into being well, I mean, you have to you have to start with your parents. I mean, without my parents, I wouldn't be here, obviously. But my parents were my parents were immigrants, and they were hard workers. And I I saw how they struggled to make a better life for me and my sister. And um, they were I can tell you they were pretty nervous when I decided that I was going to leave school and become a folk singer. It was not what immigrant parents wanted for their kids. But they were also the people who went to the department stores and reorganized the record collections so that our records were, were at the front. My father would reorganize them and my mother would um, would uh, keep watch the guard <laughs> to make sure. So, and, and when we pay, played in Toronto, the band always knew my mother was gonna bake a sponge cake for them and she would come backstage and bring the cake. So my parents, my parents, my family are significant. My husband did a lot of, a lot of, music arranging he was a musician as well with a group called the travelers and he did a lot he he did a lot of arranging for us for sharon lois and bram and he taught bram bram says that he could never have sung harmony without joe joe taught him so and randy i mean my family has been so integrated into the, the support and success that that i've experienced pete seeger is is a, was a folk singer and from pete i grew up listening to the music of Pete Seeger. And he he used his music to address social issues, but he also, he was the best example of people making music together. He could take any audience 
and get them singing together, singing harmonies, all of that sort of thing. And I learned a lot about the, the joys of people making music together from, from watching Pete Seeger. So, and so there are, of course, so many more, but Randy, you might have some to add as well. Well, dad, you. of course, my, you know, my dad for sure, and my grandparents. And, you know, uh, Lois and her husband were really aunt and uncle to me. When I was thinking about going to law school, it was Lois's husband who helped and supported and encouraged me down that path. Lois had a son. And so I got spoiled as an honorary daughter. You know, I would borrow clothes from her. I would uh, go on shopping sprees with her, that, that sort of thing. Um, Bram's first wife, Ruth, was another person that I was very, very close with. And when you spend as much time together um, watching performances and going to the recording studio, you develop a really tight bond and she was somebody who really similarly understood what our lives were like. So really those are the, the people that I think about and reflect on um, in terms of where I am now. Mm. And, and I believe Fred said something to the effect of that whether those people that you mention are near or far, whether they're still with us or shining down from heaven, that they're smiling, knowing the impact that they made on your life. And we're also huge Disney buffs here at the Children's Book Spotlight Series, which <laughs> reminds us that we have the abilities to bring to form and shape our dreams, our desires, our goals, our ambitions. We can literally have our wishes be fulfilled. And in the process, we have the ability to help those who are in our lives, those who we love, those who we care about, those who we're asked to, to bless and to be of service to. And so we go back to the year 1992. It was shortly after the Sharon Lois and Brand Elephant Show. I was around that point in time. I believe I was 11 at that point. We remember the Disney animated classic Aladdin. We remember the late Robin Williams, who voiced the genie of the lamp. And we have a little segment that we like to call Three Wishes. So yes, you have a trusted genie lamp that has gone with us literally, I think almost since day one of the children's book spotlight series. So, and technically this will be for the both of you, but Sharon, you've given so freely to children, to parents, to families, to to every, every person around the world. You've given so much. This is your opportunity to be able to receive. So both you and Randy are being given three wishes. Now, I think the, 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 the only automatic disqualifier is you can't ask for more wishes and you can't have anyone fall in love with you, but anything else is fair. <laughs> game. So what would those, what would those three wishes be? Wow. That's really interesting. Well, you know, I, I, I can't help but wish for the happiness and good health of my family. And my family is my daughter and her, my wonderful grandsons and their partners that present or future and my son and his wife those are you know that's that's the first and most obvious i think that's the most obvious wish um randy what about you well can you can can world peace be in there yeah we can. We can i think i think it's unfortunately too lofty of a wish i thought you might say we can't do that one because unfortunately we just feel so far from that right now. Exactly. But we sure would wish that we could sing Joe's song, talk about peace. What's the line? Children trying hardest to save the world. The people trying hardest <laughs> to save the world have lived here the shortest time. That's my husband wrote that. It's about talk about peace. World peace would be good. Happiness and health for my family would be good. I would include myself in that. I'd like to stay. <laughs> yeah. Anything else, Randy? Well, I just, you know, when I think about peanut butter, we, we placed the story in a community kitchen. Um, you know, we are living in a, in a world of mm -hmm. shrinkflation and food insecurity and just the, no, the notion of children going to school hungry and families have to choose between heat or groceries, those kinds of things. I just wish that we could do more to 
make sure that food insecurity became something of the past. So that would be there. That's a biggie. Mm -hmm. That's true. And it is unfortunate. <clears throat> and But I feel that when we make these wishes from our hearts, that they have a greater chance of coming true and coming to <laughs> fruition. Well, I like that. Thank yes. you, John. Oh, absolutely. Razor so, John, can I, can I add one more? Oh, I please. can't remember how many I had. But, you know, my wish is that <clears throat> the books um, that we have written become as successful in the United States as they have been in Canada, because I believe the messages are universally <clears throat> shared and timeless, and we just need for people to know about them so that they can uh, enjoy them too. That's a selfish wish, but oh no, 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 this yes is yes and no. When you're when you're doing your part to be able to get these books and thus the songs, I mean, there's. I, I know that there's many people that, I mean, obviously going to be tuning into this particular episode, that being the 200th episode celebration of the Children's Book Spotlight, is, but I have had so many conversations recently with, with friends out here and colleagues of mine, and they tell me about this Sharon Lois and Bram. I, I've never heard of them before. And these are people who aren't kids. These are people who were, you know, born in the United States, who, you know, they're familiar with the Mr. Rogers Neighborhood. If I mention, hey, do you remember this episode of Mr. Rogers Neighborhood? They're going to say, sure. If I say, do you remember the episode when the crane operator was saying, I love you of the Sharon Lois and Bram Elephant show? They're going to say, no. And so <laughs> it's, I I feel that that is a wish that is definitely going to come true. And, and we're, we're doing our part here at the Children's Book Spotlight series, because even though I do feel like because I remember places like the Sky Dome and Sam the Record Man and Harvey's and Paramount Canada's Wonderland. I can mention all these Canadian references, even though I feel like maybe an honorary Canadian. We obviously do our part to be able to uh, to do our part here in the States as well, too. And, of course, if you are a big movie buff, you remember in the 80s and 90s, the, the beloved movie critic duo Siskel and Ebert, when they loved First. a movie, they gave it two thumbs up. Well, in the world of children's literature, one of the fastest ranking endorsements of a children's book is when Little Forest gives two paws up and Little Forest is giving two paws up for Sharon Lois and Bram's Peanut Butter and Jelly and all of their amazing children's books as well. Raise your hand if you have had fun on episode number 200 of the children's book spotlight series. We see hands from Sharon Hands from Randy, hands from myself, hands from the little ones on screen, hands up, well, paws up, I should say, for Little Forest. But as we like to say, that means mission accomplished, job well done. And as we hear the trolley, that means that it is time to go. But fear not, there are many more magical trolley stops to come. It's taken us a while to get to episode number 200, but there are many more magical trolley stops to come. But before we officially conclude the program, we encourage all of you, if you haven't had the opportunities to do so, to, to really take the time, connect with your heart, and know the fact that this particular these messages that we've shared here today can help someone in need. So if you've enjoyed this trolley stop, if you've enjoyed episode number 200 of the Children's Book Spotlight series, if you say, you know what, now, Sharon, Randy, John, I know that life can be a celebration filled with music and delicious good food where the main meal of choice is peanut butter and jelly, but we're going to be serving other things to complement that as well, too. Again, one of the many ways you can pledge your support for us here at the Children's Book Spotlight series is to subscribe to PR from the Hearts official YouTube channel. And again, share this very special trolley stop. Joining the PR from the Heart family, more than 10,000 subscribers on YouTube. So thank you all for your continued support as well too in the process. If you are a children's author, if you are a middle grade author, and would love to share your inspiring story on a forthcoming edition of the Children's Book Spotlight series, just like Sharon and Randy did here today, we encourage you to head on over to our official website, prfromtheheart.com, or you can connect with us via any of our social media platforms that you now see on screen. Facebook, Instagram, and as we like to call it, the artist formerly known as Twitter. We still can't call it X for the life of us. So we call it the artist <laughs> formerly known as Twitter. <clears throat> and of course, February is has been such a, a blessed month here at PR From the Heart because we also just celebrated our three-year anniversary celebration of the Neighborly Reviews bookcast. 
David Newell and I, we just recently released episode number 36, which is now available, of course. If you remember him and you love him as the beloved Mr. McFeely on the popular long-running children's television program, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. Well, David and I, we take the time as a little tip of the cap to his character. We deliver new heartfelt reviews from some of the top children's books from published authors and the self-published authors in the kid-lit community. If you would like for us to be able to deliver a heartfelt review of your brand new children's book on a forthcoming edition of the Neighborly Reviews Bookcast, you know where to connect with us. And for all children's authors who need some support and assistance in having their dreams come true and their journey taking flight in 2024 and beyond, we are really looking forward to celebrating our 10 year anniversary of course, and being serviced to children's authors all across the country and around the world. So if we can do our part to be of service to you, if you're interested in facilitating a book media tour in a city of your choosing or a national book media tour, you can schedule your courtesy connection call by visiting our official website, prfromtheheart.com. One final time, we encourage all of you, if you, in case you haven't had the chance to do so, by all means, flock over to Amazon.ca. You can enjoy and purchase your copy of Sharon Lois and Bram's Peanut Butter and Jelly, as well as Skinnamarink. Their children's books are truly resources of care, and you will thoroughly enjoy them in the process. Be sure to leave that five-star review on Amazon.ca. If you were in the States, you can also do what I did. I can act I actually went on to eBay and I purchased my copy of, of peanut butter and jelly because, again, these are timeless messages that, that need to continue to be able to get out there, especially for the children of the world, especially for the next generation. We want to thank you for your continued support, PR from the heart for your continued support of the Children's Book Spotlight series, for your continued support of children's authors and illustrators all across the country and all around the world, especially for all of our Canadian friends, just like Sharon and Randy, who again are doing such a wonderful job for children, parents, families, educators, and for those who love great children's books, for your continued support of local libraries and children's and independent bookstores, truly the pillars of our community. Above all else, we want to thank you for helping us to walk home, the children of the world. One final time, of course, the spirit of Mr. Rogers, he's always with us here at the Children's Book Spotlight Series, has been since day one. It's very interesting because somehow Mr. Rogers weighed 143 pounds for his entire natural adult life. <laughs> Interestingly enough, I feel that that was his own, in his own private numerology kind of way, his way of saying that he loved us because there's one letter in I, four letters in love, three letters in you. And as Sharon and Randy and Little Forrest were kind enough to join me here on the 200th episode celebration of the Children's Book Spotlight series, we share our three favorite numbers of two, four, three. There's two letters in we, four letters in love, three letters in you. That is our reminder that we see you, that we like you, that we love you just the way that you are, that you are whole, healthy, and complete. That we like you, that we love you just the way that you are. And I would be remiss, I think the perfect way to close things out, the only way possible is could you lead us out with with the with skin and marink that's a, a little I, that's that's a request from both Forrest and I as we close sure. out the celebration. Sure, sure. I'll do it. I'll do a mini one. Mm -hmm. Randy, you all sing and you do the actions. Skin and marink, he dink, he dink, skin and marink, he do. I love you too. Boop, boop, be doo. Mwah. Thank you, John. Thank you for helping us to walk home the children of the world, fellow friends our fellow neighbors, and our fellow shining stars. Goodbye for now.